Okay, so we can start. Not to yes, please. Waste time. Yes. So uh, uh, last week we uh, were talking about the Asubha Bhavana, the cultivation of the uh, attention on the non-beautiful. Hmm? And uh, I have checked uh, with uh, Mahavi Bhasha Shastra, also you find reference in Abhidharma Kosha. According to Mahavi Bhasha Shastra, and uh, this text is, as I have mentioned in the first lesson, is closely connected to the Kashmiri yoga tradition. The uh, Kumarajiva was trained in this tradition, uh, became an expert in this tradition, and used this as a base for the study of the so-called Bodhisattva path, the Mahayana scriptures. So we have uh, said that those who were listening probably to this discourse on meditation which is likely to have been written down by some of his disciples, probably the uh, Shravaka disciple. So uh, in the Mahavibhasha Shastra, it is also said literally that sitting starts with uh, Asubha Bhavana. Uh, so we have the same order here uh, to go into meditation. Uh, first, we pay attention to the non-beautiful objects in order to the, uh, reduce the uh, most important obstacle in meditation, which is uh, the uh, Abhidharma Kosha calls it uh, many desires and uh, no ability to be contented, no santushti. In order to uh, meditate, we have to be contented and we have to have few desires. And we have many desires because we pay attention to the beautiful objects. The desire comes from paying attention to the beautiful object and craving for a pleasant sensation based on a beautiful uh, object. Here is meant naturally beautiful sensual objects, beautiful kama gunas. And the kama gunas are the distracting element and are the base for all the uh, nivaranas, obstacles in meditation that we will talk about today. So uh, when we get into the first dhyana, uh, it is said first we remove the kama raga, the desire for the panchaguna, for the five objects of the senses, and then all the other unwholesome vitarkas, all the other unwholesome thoughts. So the unwholesome thoughts are, so to say, grounded in a desire for gratification of the senses. And the gratification of the senses is based on attachment. And because uh, we want to get into dhyana, so we need to reduce attachment. And it is reduced precisely by practicing one-pointed concentration. We will talk about it in uh, relation to the five nivaranas, which comes in the next, uh, the third chapter. But before coming to the third chapter, also you will find the same in uh, Abhidharma Kosha, in uh, Mahavibhasha. Uh, the text 
is uh, discussing who is the uh, uh, the uh, suitable bhajana, the suitable vessel for meditation. First discussing, we enter into sitting by paying attention to not beautiful, then discussing who is a suitable vessel, hmm, bhajana, for meditation. So this is the uh, uh, next part of the text. So uh, that's why this section starts with encouraging the meditator to practice with resolution, with adhimoksha, and uh, not to let his mind be distracted by other objects, stay with the object of meditation. The uh, Bisuddhimaga calls, we stay with the object of meditation because we master the applied and sustained attention to the meditation object or applied and sustained thought as Vitarka and Vichara is often translated. Here, applied and sustained thought to the meditation object. That's how the mind goes inside the body because the meditation object is a mental object. It is very important to understand. We only can practice deep concentration on uh, the object of the mental consciousness. If our consciousness is distracted outside by the five uh, Kama Gunas, five objects of the five senses, then the uh, development of concentration will be hindered. And we are attracted to the beautiful outer objects because we have attachment. And because we have attachment, we cannot let go. And because we cannot let go, our mind is not balanced. So, uh, the, the text says the meditator should not pay attention to any other desires than the desire for the meditation object. Uh, Buddhism has a principle, sabbe dhamma chanda mulika. Desire means desire to do which is chanda. So we have either desire for kama, which is a cause of vikshepa, which is a cause of distraction of the mind, or we have dharma desire, dhamma chanda, which is the cause of the uh, concentration inside. Concentration on the shamata, or vipassana kamatana. In a practicing meditation means practicing kamatana, karmastana. And in meditation there are two kinds of objects, the shamata karmastana and the vipassana karmastana. So here the shamata karmastana is meant and we first have to study the shamatha karmatana in order to be able to penetrate through the vipassana objects, vipassana karmastana. This is the common principle in all Buddhist traditions and in yoga in general. So, uh, the text then encourages the meditator to practice hard and saying that if he practices hard he will obtain uh, the state of jhana very fast provided he is of the uh, uh, sharp faculty tikshnindriya 
it even says within one week we can master the uh, shamatha practice what he actually means is master entrance into the first dhyana now average meditator he says in three weeks but the dull meditators like most of us are especially in this modern times when we the vikshepa the agitated mind is our nature so we will take a long time but we will get there the text says provided we have the correct method without the correct method we won't get there and it is compared studying without the correct method like churning water one will never obtain butter so then we come to the questions What are the reasons of non-attainment? You have exactly in the uh, Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, also in Mahavibhasha Shastra, it says uh, what, is the, what are the causes of the Yoga Brahmsha, the falling away from Yoga. So here it follows the pattern which you will find in other scriptures. So uh, these uh, questions are discussed in uh, Mahavibhasha, in Yogacara Bhumi Shastra. We won't go into the detail, you can check. And let's see what our uh, text says. It says very similar things you will find in the Yogacara Bhumi Shastra. So uh, the, uh, the, he gives uh, several reasons. The first one is uh, one transgresses the precepts and is unable to repent. Hmm? This is especially for the monks. The remorse is, of course, an obstacle in meditation. Remorse is uh, in uh, among the nivaranas, we will learn, among the obstacles. It is uh, coming together with audatyam, with excitement. As long as we have remorse, we will be excited. And when we excite it, then we cannot go deep into meditation, impossible. Because the purpose of shamatha is to uh, remove excitement. The purpose of vipassana is to remove the dullness. This is what the Yogacara Bhumi Shastra says. But the mastery of shamatha is when the mind does not sink, when it is not dull, when it has no uh, lack of virya, when it has no kausidya, no laziness. And uh, the opposite of vipassana is, of course, dullness, is laziness, kausidya, lack of virya. But the vipassana will succeed when it has removed excitement. So, uh, shamatha. The opposite of shamatha is excitement. And uh, if one repents, then one is, of course, excited. The second one is if one has wrong views and does not abandon them, and if one has cut off 
the wholesome roots hmm? well of course the uh, wrong views is uh, connected with having no wisdom one who has no wisdom he cannot succeed in meditation why because the object of shamatha and vipassana has to be a clear object and the clear distinction is the uh, uh, characteristic of wisdom finally we practice meditation in order to purify the mind by wisdom all the other cultivations of all the other qualities we need for liberation are just only tools of wisdom you will find the same principle in uh, uh, many uh, scriptures of northern southern buddhism the uh, dhammapada says Saddena tarati ogam apamadena anavam viriena dukkam acceti panyaya visujati. Hmm? When one, one will cross the flood, one will, uh, when one has the faith, conviction, one will cross the ocean when one has mindfulness, when one is not negligent, one will remove suffering when one has uh, energy, when one is energetic. And all this is in order to purify the mind by wisdom. In uh, Visuddhimagga you have a wonderful story of three friends coming in during the festival to worship the Ishtadevata, their favorite god, be it Savitri here, because we are talking about wisdom. So they want to pluck the uh, champa, Champaka flowers but they, they are too high. So one uh, supports the one who wants to pluck the flowers, but he is not stable enough. So comes another one which gives his shoulder, so he supports on his shoulder and uh, is lifted by the other friend and plucks the champaka flowers. So this is uh, exactly our uh, qualities we need the base is mindfulness you support yourself by energy and the only then the uh, uh, one-pointed concentration can pluck the flowers of wisdom the samadhi So uh, in order to meditate, one should not be excited, one has to have uh, uh, right views, that means wisdom, uh, one has to have uh, the kushala mulas, the roots of good, some virtues in the past. Uh, one does not have uh, three veils of ignorance hmm? the karma, karma vipaka and kleshas too strong if these are too strong they one cannot succeed also uh, that means if one has uh, strong defilements or if one has committed the five uh, deeds leading to the immediate retribution in hell uh, those studying buddhism you know killing mother father and so on so 
So these are not able to practice. And here he comes. Nagarjuna, by the back door, the listener is very likely to be a devoted bhikshu studying the path to Arahatship. But the uh, Kumarajiva, who has converted to the Bodhisattva path, says, if one practices the Mahayana, one practices the Paramis, if one practices the Paramis, he has, uh, because he reads the scriptures and does all the uh, good deeds, therefore for him the meditation will be easy. Because he himself practices good deeds, paramis, starting with the ten wholesome kam kamapata, dasa kusala kamapata, ten wholesome uh, uh, actions, and converting others to do the same. That means what is practice of Bodhisattva, not distinguishing between one's own needs and the needs of others. A non-dualistic approach. We will see then later that uh, the uh, in the uh, Theravada tradition, also in Sarvastivada, the practicing of Samadhi means practicing the eight Samapatis, the eight attainments, four in the Rupas, four in the Arupas. In the Mahayana path, in the Bodhisattva path, the, uh, eventually the uh, emphasis in Shamatha is not anymore on the practice of the eight samapatis, mastery of the eight samapatis. It is, its virtues are never questioned, but uh, what is necessary is to enter a balanced, stable mind and stay in this balanced, stable mind in order to penetrate the secrets of the mind itself because the mind is the, as Dhammapada says, is the root of all the phenomena, is, contains all the phenomena. Dhamma Seta, Dhamma Maya, uh, the, uh, the mind contains and leads all the phenomena. So we will see the, what the Bodhisattva path emphasizes is rather the right application of the mind to the object, to all objects. And uh, the attainment of jhanas, which according to Abhidhamma is the content of sama samadhi, of the right samadhi, is so to say, only the uh, accessory of this practice of right application. So another question, how does one know a person has obtained one-pointed mind? This is very important. We practice meditation. How do we know we have attained the one-pointed mind and we are ready to enter into the deep states of mind. And this is very important now. Uh, the condition is that the mind dwells on the mental image. Here I translate nimitta as a mental image because this tradition emphasizes very much 
we have said the Kashmiri yoga has the gradual path and has more the direct path. The emphasis, the gradual path and uh, direct path, they are not contradictory, they are complementary. Kam Kumarajiva himself is uh, very much emphasizing this idea. In order to succeed in meditation, we have to understand that importance of the mental image, nimita. This is especially important to understand the presentation of meditation in the Bodhisattva path. Actually, all mental processes start with a mental image. We have to first realize this in meditation, then we can realize that actually all in Theravada tradition, all mental processes start with the act of manasikara, with the act of attention. In uh, the uh, Mahayana tradition, it is emphasized that all the mental processes start with the mental image. You have a mental image, the mind will appear. So the Abhidharma Samuchaya Asanga says that uh, when the mind does not move, that is shamatha, when the mind moves on the base of mental image, then it is vipassana. And practicing correct application to a mental image which moves and mental image which does not move is the essence of the meditation practice in this tradition. So if one is able to in a vipassana, in a shamatha practice to lead the mind consequently to the same mental image the visuddhimagga compares the mental Im the uh, vitarka to a raja valabhi to a intimate friend of the king due to which who is the king the states of deep medita deep meditation deep concentration in order to experience these states we need uh, the uh, un the intimate friend of the king raja valabhi and that is precisely vitarka which uh, conduces the mind to the object to the same mental object. Only when we systematically direct the mind to the same mental object, the mind will remove the five hindrances. And then it can cross from the sphere of Kamadhatu of the perception based on five senses to the sphere of perception based on mental object, rupa. Mental object is always subtle object. In meditation. Of course, not in dreams, but in meditation. So, 
So if one can do this, then the text says his body becomes soft and light. This is uh, the translation of the Sanskrit technical term you find in yoga, in Buddhism, in Jainism, called Prashrabdi. In order to enter into meditation, we need two healthy, positive mental factors. One is Prashrabdi, and another one is Samskara Upeksha. The Chinese translate Prashrabdi as uh, the lightness and peace. In the Theravada tradition, Prashrabdi is, and in Abhidharma Kosha also, the Prashrabdi is interpreted as Karmanyata. Karmanyata means uh, ability to do. We uh, usually translate it as pliancy. And uh, in the Theravada tradition, this pliancy, mental and bodily, is connected with four other mental factors uh, which are mentioned in a way here lightness softness smoothness straightness hmm? ujjutata lahuta kamanyata nipunata uh, the uh, expertise in what one is doing when one becomes light and relaxed, one can do things very easily, without disturbance, without agitation. So all these are, in uh, the uh, northern tradition, just aspects of the one mental factor called Prashrabdi. And Prashrabdi is same in northern tradition, same in southern tradition, is supposed to be present in all healthy states of mind, all kusalachitas. Same for upeksha, here means samskara upeksha. In Buddhism, we have to distinguish upeksha as adukha, asukha, vedana, neutral, sensation and samskara upeksha. In order to practice meditation, shamata kamatana, vipassana kamatana, the condition is the mind has samskara upeksha, meaning it does not cling to the pleasant sensation and it does not reject the unpleasant sensation. So, if it has Prashrabdi and Kamanyata, uh, uh, Prashrabdi and Samskara Upeksha, then all these signs will appear. He will have joy, happiness, one pointedness will come naturally without striving. So, uh, no more vexation and worry in his mind. No more resistance. Vexation and worry all comes under the uh, Abhidharma term Pratigha. Resistance. Pratihan. Striking against something. There is, in the state of Prashrabdi and uh, Upeksha, there is nothing to strike against. So, in a state of uh, 
one-pointed mind, there is no suffering. There may be uh, some physical sensations, but no suffering, no mental suffering. So the uh, process of mastering the one-pointedness of mind is also the process of entering into continuity of a pleasant sensation. We practice shamatha in order to master the pleasant sensation. It is said we will learn in the fourth dhyana there is no more pleasant or unpleasant sensation, there is only neutral sensation. But the Buddha teaches that precisely the neutral sensation is pleasant for the wise and unpleasant for the stupid. Why? Because the we will learn the perfect mind is attained when there is no place for attachment to sensation. As long as there is place for attachment to sensation, the, this will not be a perfect mind. That's why the Yogacara Bhumi Shastra calls the fourth dhyana, where there is no place for attachment to sensation, Nirvana Sadrisha, similar to Nirvana. And indeed, Buddha is said to enter Parinirvana in the fourth dhyana, which has a perfect balance. So, preparing for the uh, abandoning of sensations is a continuous experience of the pleasant sensation. Only when we are familiar with the pleasant sensation, we will be able to tolerate the unpleasant sensation of impermanence. And impermanence is a fact to be penetrated. All that is a process is impermanence, and all that we experience in this world is just a process, including the meditation. So, uh, because one experiences deeply continuity in joy and happiness while practicing one-pointed concentration, there is no place for resistance. Because there is no place for resistance, one lets go. Samskara Upeksha. So, one is filled, as the texts say, with peace and joy. When this happens, the text compares the situation with a thirsty man. In order to succeed in dhyana, we have to be thirsty for dhyana. In order to succeed in vipassana, we have to be thirsty for vipassana. Only when we thirsty for shamatha and vipassana, we can let go. Why? Because we can only let go in the state of the balanced mind. So when this uh, peace and joy is there, so just like uh, one digging a well, when he encounters mud, he knows he's going to succeed. So when the peace and joy is there, the one who practices meditation knows he's going to succeed soon. The scriptures 
describe all kinds of other signs like sensation at the Brahma Dwara and so on and so on. We don't need to go into that. But when this uh, peace and joy is there, automatically the mind uh, in state of deep concentration rejects the uh, five desires. The states of mind, craving for five panchagunas, five objects of the five senses. The automatically mind rejects when it is in deep concentration. That's why we will see among when we talk about the five obstacles, panchanivaranas, first, kamaraga. The Kama Raga, according to the Abhidharma, is opposite of Samadhi. When there is Samadhi, one-pointed concentration, there is no Kama Raga. There is no desire for the objects of the five senses. When we lose the one-pointed concentration, this need for enjoyment of the five senses will arise. So the one who has attained in this way the peace and joy, he will blame automatically the uh, desire for the five senses because he does not want to lose the happiness. One who, who is in happiness, he does not want to lose happiness. And finally, the... Uh, we practice meditation to experience happiness. And when one has happiness, one does not want to lose it. And one won't lose this more subtle happiness than whatever happiness one can get through the five senses. Uh, then automatically one will not be interested in the sensuality. During the state of deep concentration, when he abandons the state of deep concentration, of course it will come, and it may come even stronger than ever before, because the strong concentration is strong sensitivity. And the whole Buddhist cosmology is based on this principle. The more subtle the object, the more subtle the enjoyment. If we want to understand the Buddhism, the whole Buddhism is, cosmology of Buddhism is based on this principle. So these different spheres of God Described, they are the spheres of more and more subtle enjoyment until the most subtle enjoyment which is beyond any idea of enjoying and that is the enjoyment of liberation. Why? Because as we have explained the Neither pleasant nor unpleasant sensation is, according to Buddhism, pleasant for the wise and unpleasant for the non-wise. So, uh, 
contemplating in this way, then it's, its text says that uh, going after sensual desires is like a dog nibbling in a foul smelling excrement. So, uh, if there is uh, no desire for sensuality, it means one is nearing the Rupadhatu. Rupadhatu, the sphere of perception of the subtle form, is beyond desire for sensuality. Why? Because in that sphere all objects are subtle and uh, mental objects are subtle. The uh, objects of the five senses, they are gross. Abhidharma never stops emphasizing this principle. So, uh, those who enjoy the five kinds of sensual desires at the end do not know how to search for happiness, which comes from mind, my addition. So, they indulge in searching outside for impure, vicious pleasure. Among others, it is very important uh, this belongs to the Samma Sati, right mindfulness. This is right mindfulness in terms of the Shamatha meditation. The right mindfulness is a base for right Samadhi, Samma Samadhi. And the Abhidharma explained explains jhana as a sama samadhi the correct samadhi the correct samadhi is only possible on the base of a correct sati in uh, the uh, thousand tradition sati is always correct. It belongs to the Kusala Dhamma, Kusala Chetasika. In the northern tradition, however, the Sati is uh, in uh, Sarvastivada is among the Mahabhumika. It is among the uh, mental factors present in each and every state of uh, mental cognition. We cannot have mental cognition without the sati. Now, the right sati is when we aware of objects but do not grasp for them. We keep firmly in mind the object of our attention, yet we are open for all the other objects. That is samasati. Because we do not cling. The michasati is we cling to the object of attention. like a cat trying to catch a mouth. Cat catches the mice in order to enjoy it, to grab it. Very attentive, but it is a micha sati. Similarly, meditator, when he pays attention to the objects of the five senses, it is a micha sati. 
it is a wrong mindfulness which will prevent him from experiencing right samadhi, jhana. This is the explanation you will find in the commentaries of Abhidharma. So, uh, 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 next paragraph, the end paragraph, I hope, of this uh, section uh, speaks about the importance of Yonisho Manasikara, of the right of attention based in reality. What is Yonisho Manasikara? Attention based in reality. According to Chinese, Zhu Li Zui, Zhu Li means based in principle. What is the principle of the world? Impermanence, distress of impermanence in northern tradition, emptiness, because impermanence does not belong to anyone. and the selflessness. In the thousand tradition, impermanence, stress, selflessness, and impurity. We have mentioned in regards to the Asuba Bhavana, to the cultivation of the non-beautiful. In the northern tradition, in Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, even the impermanence is integrated into the practice of Asuba. The impermanence is also an undesirable object. So how do we make undesirable objects? impermanence by contemplating the we want to go to the sphere of subtle forms where everything is more stable so we contemplate the sphere of perception based on the five senses as being impermanence st uh, distress of impermanence emptiness and non-self And this same description you will find in Abhidharma, in Visuddhimagga. So he contemplates the sphere of perception based on the five senses as uh, exactly the same b words in Visuddhimagga, disease, boils, tumors, darts, which have entered the heart. So all the troubles come from the desires of the five senses. Leaving the desires of the five senses, one can enter into the contemplation, near contemplation of the subtle forms. Unless we detach from the five senses, we will not be able to contemplate in joy and happiness the subtle forms. In other words, the it comes in yoga, it comes in Buddhism, the beautiful is the subtle. The uh, non-beautiful is the gross. So, prasharabdi, karmanyata, pliancy, is the opposite of daushtulyam. Daushtulyam means grossness. By we practice meditation by experiencing the subtleness and 
moving away from grossness. When we have moved away from grossness, we experience jhanas. But in the jhanas themselves, we still continue in the practice of deepening the subtle and removing the gross. In jhana itself, there are gross factors of jhana and there are subtle factors of jhana. So one continues removing the gross by experiencing the subtle until the experience of the subtle beyond subtle which is liberation. This comes in the training in Shamatha. This also comes in the training in Vipassana. Both training in Shamatha and in Vipassana is training in abandoning the Tao Studia, abandoning the gross and experiencing the subtle. Until the final subtle of the subtle, the subtle of ekarasa, of one taste, the vimukti rasa, the taste of liberation. So from now we go to the five hindrances. And we can see the first hindrance, pancha nivarana. We can also translate these uh, nivaranas as veils, but that would be a bit, a bit confusing because avarana is also veil. Hmm? But nivarana has more to do with uh, veil, which prevents us from experiencing the subtle. And the first is, as we have said, the Kamaraga. Kamaraga is the root of all grossness. This is very important to understand. So uh, the text starts with uh, what we call in Buddhism Samvega. One has to be shaken in order to meditate. One has to be shaken in order to know the uh, five senses being an obstacle because the five senses are indeed very pleasant. But not in the state of prashrabdi and samskara upeksha. The five senses are not pleasant in the state of subtlety and balanced mind. But they, in all other cases, they are very pleasant. Suppose our body is healthy. So through the Samvega one comes to Viveka. And the first Dhyana as we will see is Vivekaja. Is born, literally born from separation. Now, in yoga, in Buddhism, viveka, from the Sanskrit root 
which which means actually to separate viveka has a meaning of separation isolation but it also has a meaning of wisdom wisdom is also distinction separation distinction is separation And in order to separate ourselves from the desires of the five senses, one has to be shaken inside. That is some vega. And how to shake one who is a monk and wants to practice meditation of course this is the first uh, part if one is a monk one is uh, dependent on charity and one is being uh, given charity because the lay people think that he is practicing a better way. And the better way is to separate from the desires of the five senses. This is the standard common to all the Indian Shramana tradition, the one becomes a Shramana, one becomes a ascetic yogi by detaching from the five senses. And if this detachment is not there, one should be shaken. So now the time is over already. Huh? So let us do these five hindrances uh, next time. Hmm? And uh, we can. Five hindrances is the uh, introduction to the first dhyana. Because the first dhyana means abandoning five hindrances by the five jhana angas when the jhana angas are strong the five hindrances disappear because the five jhana angas we can translate here angas as a parts of jhana or also maybe a better translation causes of jhana when these causes of jhana are strong five hindrances do not appear when the causes of jhana are weak, the five hindrances will be there. So, attaining a jhana is only a preliminary for a real practice of shamatha, which is really based in abandoning of even the traces of the five hindrances. After getting into the jhana these traces will still appear they are still ups and downs because the vasanas of previous experiences they deeply rooted in our mind Okay, so uh, let us finish here. Let's go to the questions. Otherwise, we will miss that part today. Hmm? Are there any questions, Supriya? Thank you, Bhante. Uh, there is uh, one that has come in, and uh, perhaps uh, there will be more uh, after you take this one. Uh, we could start with this. Uh, 
uh, this uh, participant is saying thank you, uh, Bhante, for the teachings and clarifications. Uh, this is a question uh, about the term prashabdi, mm -hmm. which, as you pointed out, is often translated as pliancy. Can it ever be translated as proficiency? Well, that Can it ever be, have? That would be nipunata. In Theravada tradition, it is translated proficiency as nipunata, uh, which is uh, also, in a way, part of the complex of prashabdi, as we have said. Prashabdi mm. is a whole complex. It implies uh, the lightness, it implies straightness, it implies softness, it implies straightness. All these are implied, and proficiency also. So uh, I think uh, pliancy is still the, uh, the best translation because uh, mm -hmm. it is presented as karmanyata. Karmanyata means pliancy. But uh, when you translate it as uh, what it was, uh, expertise or proficiency, proficiency, it is not wrong. It is not wrong, but why to invent something if something very reasonable is already there? <laughs> Now, it is a kind of a fashion among the Buddhists to try always to invent something new when it is not uh, really necessary. So. so we should keep the uh, terms which have been established and are established based on uh, valid means of knowledge. But of course, it is not wrong. Any other question? If anyone has any question, uh, please type it in the uh, chat box, and uh, we can request uh, Bhante to address it. Um, okay. I think you have given us a lot to reflect on actually uh, today, uh, Bhante. You know, uh, better to uh, uh, better to sometimes digest and uh, reflect before opening one's mouth. Okay, we should avoid the um, men mental diarrhea or mental constipation. <laughs> let us. Uh, reflect and uh, we will meet uh, next uh, next week huh? yeah okay. um, there is a one small question which has just come in which it's actually got a very big answer if you could explain meditation some shamatha meditation objects do you want to take it now or we could do it next time well if we start uh, this yeah then we will uh, we will quit the text hmm? And this yeah. is supposed to be kind of a commentary to the text. Correct. So maybe uh, uh, we will uh, we will uh, do that after we finish huh, this text. Yes. We can do, or maybe I hope to be able to go again to India so we can do some meditation. Uh, I am teaching regularly in in Bir and in Kathmandu and. Uh, also in Pune, huh? we can do some course. And also in Mumbai. Hmm? Also in Mumbai. In Mumbai, <laughs> but uh, the Mumbai more... <laughs> too noisy. Huh? Too noisy. Huh? We can go to the Pune center. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Is it? Does it still exist? Is it still used? Uh, the center of uh, Lokamitra is very much there. And even the Vajradhatu has, uh, I think it's going to shut down. Uh, it was difficult to sustain these things through the lockdown, uh, Bhante. But I think uh, Lokamitra's center is still there. That is near the that caves, is. no? The yes. I have, yeah. thought, I have thought there one, once. That's right, yeah. 
It's very drastic and uh, very simple, like really like kutis, okay, you know, with bamboo and all that. You can organize so. something there. Huh? Sure. sure. And the Sakarwadi, of course. We can also organize at Sakarwadi. We had taken our students there last time when you were there. That was also very nice. The, we, if we start explaining the method of meditation and so on, yeah. it will take us miles away from the text. Huh? Yes. But I can notice by sight a little bit. Huh? I okay. can uh, mention only. Huh? Okay. Okay. So let us uh, do the general practice, transfer the merit. Eta vata chame hi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodanti sabha sampati sidiyam. Eta vata chame hi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe bhuta anumodanti Sabha Sampati Siddhiyam Eta Vata Cha Amehi Sampatam Puna Sampadam Sabbe Satta Anumodanti Sabha Sampati Siddhiyam Aka Satta Chabumatha Deva Naga Mahidika Punyanta Nanumoditwa Chiramarakantu Yekasasana Aka Satta Chabumatha Deva Naga Mahidika Punyanta Nanumoditwa Chiramarakantu Vyasana Aka Satta Chabumatha Deva Naga Mahidika Punyanta Nanumoditwa Chiramarakantu Tumampana Devo Vasatukalena Sasasampati Hetacha Pito Bhavatu Lokocha Raja Bhavatu Dhammiko Sadhu 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 So see you next week Have a wonderful week to come and uh, let us continue hmm? and get more and more deep into the more subtle aspects of the practice. Hmm? They, some meditation objects will be discussed here. Hmm? So uh, we will uh, certainly explain a little more in terms of uh, practice of metta, karuna, mudita, Upekha. These are, especially nowadays, the most important meditation topics. We all need them in order to face the unexpected situations we are exposed to. Okay? Namaste. Thank you, Pante. See you. Thank you. See you next week. Sure, how are you? Do you Okay, so... Bante, uh, uh, thank you so much. I am very well. How are you? It's such a pleasure to be able to see you. Sabti is the same thing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vanko.